My name is Rana Dejani. When I introduce myself, I like to say that I play five roles in my life. And when you talk about roles, you talk about wearing hats. And because I don't wear a hat, I wear a scarf, I talk about my five scarves. My first role is that I'm a mother. I have four children, and to me that's the most important role I can give to society. The second role is that I'm a teacher, an educator. I've been a school teacher for 10 years and a university professor for the remainder. And I think bringing up the next generation, inspiring them to be critical thinkers and lifelong learners is the second most important role I can contribute to humanity. My third role is that I'm a scientist. I'm a professor of molecular cell biology at the Hashemite University in Jordan. Uh, I work in two fields, uh, on the genetics of ethnic populations, the Circassians and the Chechens in Jordan, and on the impact of trauma on epigenetics among refugees. My fourth role is that I'm a social entrepreneur. I founded the program We Love Reading uh, that changes mindsets through reading to create change makers. And the program has spread to 60 countries and counting. My fifth scarf is that I defend human rights and I uphold justice, defending women, minorities, and people who are oppressed. And in that sense, I'm a human being who wants to live with my human brothers and sisters to make this world a better place. I grew up um, being an avid reader and that inspired me to dream, to dream large, and to want to be a pioneer, an explorer, a discoverer. However, there were no PhD programs in Jordan. And so when I graduated from my uh, university, I became a school teacher and got married. Then 10 years later, my husband saw an ad in the newspaper for the Fulbright Student Scholarship. And he told me, Rana, isn't that your dream to be a scientist? There's your opportunity. And so I applied and I got the scholarship. And the whole family, my husband and four kids, we moved to the United States for me to pursue my dream of becoming a scientist. So we moved to the United States, my family and I. And I, I wanted my children to be engaged with my work. So they came to my lab and they got to know all my mice and gave them names. And this helped in them learning more about science and how important science it is for our everyday work. Most importantly, I wanted to share our culture, our heritage, uh, to build bridges of understanding and communication with the local community in Iowa so that the children growing up in America would learn about the real people and not believe the myths that they could see on TV. And so we participated in a lot of activities in the school and in the local community. You know, you know, really, it's about being proud of where you come from and then learning from other cultures and other people so that you, you take the best of every culture and incorporate it to make a better world and a better future for your own community. Our plan all along was to go back to Jordan after I finished my PhD because we wanted to build a better future for Jordan using the skills and the learnings that we acquired. So I went back to Jordan and set up my lab at the Hashemite University and became the world expert on Circassians and Chechens and, and genetics of diabetes. However, as any scientist, you have to keep up to date with what's happening. And I wanted to go back to the US to uh, do some training on stem cell research because that was the next frontier. And so I applied to the uh, uh, Fulbright Scholarship and got a visiting professor position at Yale University Stem Cell Center. And there I spent six months, not just learning techniques and skills, but building networks to establish collaborations for the future. Because ultimately I wanted to go home and continue uh, building science in Jordan. But I needed that collaboration, that network, because nobody does science alone. And the fruit of that was setting up my second uh, field of expertise, which is the impact of trauma on the epigenetics of refugees in Jordan. Throughout my experience as a visiting professor in many universities across the United States, I've had the opportunity to meet wonderful and amazing people that has given me the chance to learn and share and grow together. Drawing from my upbringing that we all have a responsibility for our community, everyone is a guardian, as Prophet Muhammad said, I realized that as a scientist, I have a role and responsibility to the community beyond the walls of my classroom and lab. I wanted to employ the skills and the expertise and the knowledge that I have to create a difference in my community. I had realized that although the first word in the Quran is read, that most of our children do not read for fun. They read for education, for religion. And so I was inspired to start a program to train adults to read aloud to children in their local language, in their local neighborhood, on a regular basis, in a public space. And so 
The We Love Reading program started in a small neighborhood in, in Jordan and now has spread to 60 countries around the world. It's a social movement. And this is an inspiration for the Arab youth that they can not only develop solutions for their own problems, but those solutions can be exported all around the world to make a difference. It's the butterfly effect, which is uh, the chaos theory in physics. You know, I have to put science, I'm a scientist. Uh, which says, when a butterfly flutters its wings in China, it moves the air uh, just one centimeter, and the result is change in time and space, a hurricane in the Atlantic. And that's what We Love Reading did. Reflecting on the 75th anniversary of the Fulbright program and the global pandemic that we are going through together as humanity, the importance of reimagining education, focusing on fostering education resilience, motivating people to become lifelong learners, because only through education we can foster empathy, build respect, create system change to solve the challenges we are facing in the 21st century. Even though I'm a scientist, I've come to appreciate the importance of social sciences and the humanities in fostering critical thinking and interdisciplinary work so that we can achieve the sustainable development goals set up by the UN by 2030. In addition to the importance of reading that widens the imagination, boosts confidence, and builds critical thinking, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of writing. We need to write our own stories. We owe it not just to ourselves, but to future generations, so that they can read about us in our own words. And that's why I wrote my own book, Five Scarves, and I encourage you and invite you to write your own story as well, to share it with the future generations. Everyone is special. No one's DNA is like anyone else. So you are very unique and have something unique to offer to the world. Look around you, and if you find something that needs to be fixed, start fixing it in yourself and then the wider community around you. And if somebody says, who do you think you are? You're just a drop in the wa water. Tell them, but what is the ocean? except millions of drops. So believe in yourself, dream big, nothing is impossible. Be the change maker, be the catalyst. <music>